Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hello, Jared. And we have Kyle Hayes Camp, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. So this is, we were just discussing it. It's at least his second, if not third. It's hard when we're meeting up with people at Spartan races and stuff. You know, you got to, you see them often, you know who they are. They're on the BCT track, so you're getting a lot of interaction. That's just me personally. But anyway. We'll need to consult the historian officially. <clears throat> we'll consult the historian, but we're going to get into some updates, man, to see where you're at with everything. But if you want to give, you know, the basic introduction and where you're training at right now um, for anyone listening who hasn't caught your previous episode. Yeah, so just some big changes from the last one. So I'm, I'm back on active duty in the Army. Uh, I live in Massachusetts. I have transitioned from working out at a CrossFit gym to working out in my basement again, which has been nice. Uh, other than that, just a, a father of three, um, getting through day-to-day stuff like everybody else. Crazy, man. So it's, hey, did you go from California to North Carolina to Massachusetts? I did. Wow. Yeah. That's a, uh, it's, I, it's I knew there was some moving in there. Is this going to yeah, be your that, first Massachusetts winter coming up? No. So I went to high school in Southern Maine, so I'm familiar with oh, the area, okay. but I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. So what is the uh, basement setup like? Uh, I have, I got a whole bunch of free equipment, which is the best equipment, right? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm still rocking my, my basic, uh, barbell setup from one from fringe and then one from rogue. And then I just used, uh, the rack, one of those Cybex cages. That's awesome. Reverse yeah. hyper in a miscellaneous crap. Yeah. And you, you got a reverse hyper in your basement? I do. <sighs> That's awesome. <laughs> must be a big basement I, think I, I don't know yeah that's crazy well i know the basement i had in north carolina i mean you saw it joe like you, you oh, yeah, it's a walk the outside out. stuff but other basements uh, a little more challenging yeah like in new england the basements run the entire foundation of the house so there just happens to be a weird nook in the foundation that works with the recess of the front door so the reverse hyper fits in the exact width of that nook of the foundation nice oh, nice yeah, mine takes up a lot of room, but it's worth the room, which is good, man, because you're on that BCT track. So I want to know um, what some of your goals are right now. Uh, really, my my long term goal is to hit the thousand pound club at 165 body weight. And nice. so when the BCT track came on, my initial squat goal was to to gain 20 pounds this year and then double that in squat weight. So hopefully, looking at uh, above 350. So, wait, so gain 20 pounds in body weight or gain 20 pounds on the squat? I apologize. Gain 20 pounds of body weight okay, and then double that in the squat. Got it. That's awesome. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I have no doubt that you're, you're going to do it, man. 20 pounds of body weight though is. That is what I was thinking of. <laughs> just a little creatine and a lot of uh, carbohydrates and protein and you'll be fine. Yeah, a month in, I've already gained five pounds. Uh, I got that creatine bloat happening, so that's that's always nice. It's always comfortable. Yeah, so uh, we were talking about this in the chat a little bit. I was I've been taking creatine since we started BCT, and I uh, I wasn't gaining any weight. I didn't gain like an ounce, and I was like, I think I got, I think I got some fake creatine because normally you know I gain pretty fast, but it was just slow. It was slow. I gained five pounds within the last like four days. So okay. it, it all, it just, it went from like nothing to something. So there's that, that saturation phase I got through. So yeah, I, I'm up five pounds from the creatine and all the squatting. Good. good. I, you know, I going from doing all that extra running and Murph on the hard to kill. It's only a matter of time till the lack of work catches up with my, you know, catches up with my weight. It's just, it's going to be slow. So you're doing the, the weekly Murph as well. 
I am. Dude. Which is exciting. Okay, so this guy is squatting three times a week, running three times a week, and fitting in Murph in there. How's your body holding up? Oh, well, I see uh, your friend Andrew Millett from Move Strong Physical Therapy every yeah. two weeks, if that, if that helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that definitely. He, he's a good man, so he can take care of you. Uh, he posted some of your whoop recoveries, and they haven't been very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, I think my whoop's old because I have the strap two. Yeah. So I think that they're having a problem integrating the new software with the older strap. Um, I went for a five mile run with my unit the other day, vested, and it said my strain was like seven eight. I was like, "There's, oh, there's wow. no way. There's, there's no way that's possible." Yeah, just a little bit off. So I'm not taking much credibility in what the Whoop's pushing out, at least in my case anymore. Yeah, and that's. I really feel like they should upgrade for free, but they don't do that. <laughs> No, they don't. It's not Apple. Well, I mean, oh, if yeah. it's if it stops working, that's a different story than as you know, you just have old tech. But if you're th- if if they can't integrate it, I feel like it's their problem, right? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. And so I sent them an email because I'm wearing the Polar H10 with my Apple Watch. Um, and the feedback that Whoop got, and uh, I'll summarize, is basically like we have the best heart rate monitor and the best heart rate monitor technology. So um, either you're not wearing it right, or Apple and Polar is wrong. Hmm. And I was like, okay, so bold, I'm, do- I'm done. Bold with statement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Joe, what do you think you've had, you've worn them all? Like, what do you think is the most accurate heart rate monitor that you've had? I mean, my chest strap. Yeah. Whoop. I think whoop was really good when I was wearing it. Uh, I think it was pretty re- reacted pretty fast from any time I would have my phone set up. Um, I think it was pretty good. And I know some other people that, um, I've, I've talked to one person that they, they, they use a Garmin, but they get like ratches and stuff from the chest strap. So mm-hmm. they wear their whoop just to get, just to send their heart rate data to their Garmin because it's, it still works pretty well. So you might just have a faulty thing or something. I don't know what it is, but you can send a whoop heart rate to your Garmin watch. Yes. Yeah, so, so instead of having the chest strap, you can actually have your whoop record your heart rate and it, and it, and it reads on your Garmin. So the Garmin heart rate, or the heart rate you see on your Garmin is actually being read by your whoop strap. That's crazy. Oh. Well, Kyle, I want to get an update, man, just from you've had a lot of life changes uh, in a fairly short amount of time, more than more than me, which is hard to do. Um, <laughs> and And so I would like to know how you stay consistent during a lot of life changes. Um, for, for me, it was just the fact that I didn't give myself an excuse not to work out. And uh, a lot of keeping me sane and balanced and mentally healthy was, was the, the EO3 community and the program. It gave me something to do when there was a lot of uh, turmoil and ambiguity in my life. So I knew I had a workout that I had to do, and that was going to be two hours of my day getting that done. Um, you know, I, I was working on a CrossFit gym before I was even able to like find a one bedroom house to live in when I was in North Carolina for a short period of time. It was just like, it was a staple in my life that I was able to, um, pretty much bank on every day. That's and then awesome, when man. I, when I PCS to Massachusetts, I was working out in an army gym while I was waiting to get everything set up uh, in my basement. And, uh, it, you know, it, it was just there for me. It was, it was consistent. Yeah. And you've. So you've been a lot of places. What's, what is your favorite so far? I mean, you had the outdoor gym, which was pretty sweet in, in Cali. Um, I don't, did you ever set up at home in North Carolina or was it always a CrossFit gym? I was always able to set up at a CrossFit gym. Okay. And then now you have, um, basement gym. What, what's your favorite setup in? It's definitely been the, uh, the backyard gym in California. Yeah. That was pretty sweet, man. Yeah. yeah I mean, without, I, without question. Well, you lived at altitude too, didn't you? Or you lived a little bit yeah, higher I lived up? Like, like 6,200 feet, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember that. <clears throat> that's uh, just a beautiful place. Cool, man. Well, uh, I'd like to see what else has changed. You know, what else do you want to update us on? I'd, I'd love to know, like, um, anything performance-wise you've been tracking or uh, I do know you used to have that crazy night shift stuff, but I know that's been eliminated for a while now. So what, what big updates have you had or seen in performance? Uh, since I've been able to consistently train at the same time every day, and I've, you know, like you guys talked about, I've been able to nail my diet down instead of just kind of, you know, throwing it up against the wall and hoping something good sticks. 
um, my recovery uh, before BCT was really good. <laughs> I was, it. I was consistently, yeah. I'd have like four or five days at like 70, 80%. And then I'd have this weird 28% recovery, but I was consistently doing better um, with my knee and having that runner's knee bothering me every day. I started moving into a lot of zone two cardio on the bike and then running. And that's really made a big difference in everything I do, mobility, getting through the workouts, uh, body composition, not enough can be said for finding um, uh, a comfortable pace in zone two and what it can do for you throughout the spectrum of physical fitness, at least for me. I think that's most people, man. They just don't want to admit it because it's uh, slow and boring, but it's, it's really good for you. And, uh, the long, long-term athletes, the committed ones like yourself and a few others I can think of who are actually consistent with completing the zone two, I've just seen like some incredible, um, progress in you guys, like, uh, you know, going from, um, who else was it, it was Ryan, uh, Caswell was mentioning in our BCT chat, like how he, he used to, he could run 400 meters before, his heart rate would spike out of zone two. And then it was basically a walk for the rest of the time. And now he's, he's slamming almost five miles in, in the 50 minutes of zone two. It's just crazy. The, the progress you can see when you put in the work. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's okay. Oh, you're good. I was saying like a little recently I've noticed because of all the zone two that it's like even a struggle to get up into it and then stay into it for the first five, 10 minutes. If like I jump on the bike because bikes doesn't really spike my heart rate as much. But definitely the first mile and like a long run, I can go the entire first mile without. And I just noticed like the effort and muscle wise is it's a little bit harder now. It feels like it's going harder, but my heart rate's just not getting up there, which is kind of kind of cool to see because. Well, no one's going to really relate to you, Joe. You got the weird heart. Well, I still failed on the zone two Murph, which still bugs (laughs) me, still gnaws at me. But yeah. Yeah. With the bike, I normally have to, you're I'm, I'm the same way on the bike running. It's pretty easy for me to get in zone two. It's normally, it doesn't take me long. Um, but then the bike is the same. I have to like, cause I'm using the concept two biker. I have to like throw it to like eight or 10 resistance and pedal real hard for like a minute to like shoot my heart rate up and then bring it back down to like three. Right. And then, and that normally uh, gets me in zone two pretty fast. Cool, man. Well, I'm, I want to move to some of these other questions and see, uh, you know, if any of your answers have changed, uh, you know, or you got any updates. So the hardest workout you've ever done? Uh, the Carolinas Beast by far was the hardest thing I think I've done physically. My, uh, my knee locked up at about mile eight or nine with the first group. And um, I had given all my fuel away because I thought I was going to be done in an hour. <laughs> and then they just left me. So I was walking in the cold and the wet and the mud and getting all those obstacles for the next, what was it? Six miles, pretty much by myself, just cold and miserable. And that's when I realized what could break me mentally faster than anything else is being cold and wet. Yes. Yeah, that's my thing. I was, I was broken when we got out of the car and started walking to, to check in. <laughs> you were broken before we started. <laughs> yeah, I was broken on that walk there, and I was like, "Guys, it's okay. We just turn around. This is not." The same. Yeah, it was like misty and like cold, and you're like, "No, we haven't even started. This is uncomfortable." <laughs> yeah, it was a terrible. And then I partially tore my hamstring halfway through. It was good fun. Yeah, I knew I was in trouble when I crested one of the last hills, and a spectator looked at me, and she just gave me some gummy bears. She's like, "It'll be fine. You have like two miles left. Just eat these. You'll be good." I was like, "Oh, geez." <laughs> Those last two miles were the worst, though. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> All right, man. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? And has that answer changed? Um, it has. So for me, those like the hour long zone two runs where it's just kind of you and your brain knowing that you can't go any faster. Um, especially if you're an older athlete, like things just hurt. Like my knees hurt, my lower back hurts. And I just have to sit there and grind it out. Nothing's going to make it end any faster than that time going by. So yeah, zone two, long zone two runs. All right, man. If you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? This has changed too. Uh, I'm a plate carrier. So after having done 22 MRFs, I think anything that you can do calisthenic wise, if you put a plate carrier on it with 10 to 20 pounds, it's a different ball game. And it, it hurts just that much more. Very, uh, there's a lot of variety with that. It's amazing what a, uh, what a vest can do. (laughs) 
All right, man. What's the, uh, what's the biggest struggle? I want to get into that one. I don't normally ask that question um, every time, but I'd, I'd like to know because you said the community has kept you going, uh, but what is the struggle that you run into? Because we all do. You know, what's what's the biggest one for you and in, in staying consistent? Um, I haven't had a problem staying consistent. So it goes along with your book. Like if if working out is easy for you, you need to focus on something else. It's your intensity. It's getting that extra rep when you knew you didn't have it before. So that's, that was a struggle for me. Like I, I was, when I was in hard to kill, it wasn't, it wasn't hard to get up and do the workout, but then I needed to focus like on this block. I needed to crush this block as hard as I could and not try to hold back because I knew there were two or three other things coming, right. Which I was getting, I, w- I was becoming very guilty of. Um, and with BCT, you don't, you don't have that option. Like this week, the, the load week, I feel like I've been missing something because on a BCT workout, every day sucks. Every day's hard. Every rep's hard. Every mile's hard. You're not, you're not getting around it. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. That's how I feel about BCT right now too, because I have a very definite end goal in mind, you know, and a lot of us do. And one, the workouts are structured in a way to where you can't really like slack off. But I also know if I don't bring that intensity on that that last rep or, you know, hit it hard on the last interval of running or whatever, that's fine. I could do that if I want to, but that's not going to move me closer to where I want to be. So I really have to bring it every single day. And, and, and that is a struggle. It's hard to, to bring that level of intensity and also why I'm super thankful for deload weeks because I'm feeling a lot better right now. Like everything I wear and have is telling me like, I'm ready to like rip the head off of a lion. My aura rings like, we've never seen you this recovered in my garments. Like you're peaking, you better run faster and, and like all this stuff. And, uh, so it's, it's been cool, but it, yeah, it's, uh, it's been, been challenging for sure. It so helps first, to have that, the chat oh, because we can, we can bounce. Like if, like if I do the five mile run that we did last week, if I'm not pegged out on my heart rate and I post that to the group, everybody knows that everybody knows that I kind of shammed in zone three or instead of zone four. So that's kind of how you keep that intensity each each workout, at least for me. Yeah. I'm the same way. I love it, man. So I'm always conflicted during deload weeks. So I don't see how you guys feel, especially with BCT. Are you happy right now because you're on it on the deload and you're feeling good right now? Or is it bittersweet because it's like, well, Monday starts another hard three weeks. <laughs> no, I actually, I mean, I've, I've come to enjoy the BCT track and right now it's more of a fear of lost progress. Um, like I'm normally completely fine with a full deload week because I, you know, I'm, I'm in it for the long game, but right now I'm trying to get a very specific mile time and a very specific strength strength. You're not going to lose in a seven day time period deload, but aerobic fitness, um, can start regressing in like 72 hours, you know? And so that's why, you know, I'm doing zone two and then like that should maintain everything, but, uh, we'll see, I'm, I'm going to test my mile at the end of, uh, this week. And if I run the same or slower, then deload weeks are going to change to like three days. It's gonna be like a three day deload before we're, we're hitting it hard again, because I honestly feel like that's about all I really need is probably three to four days and I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, so I'm not dreading the start. I'm more, I'm anxious for the testing, I guess. All right, cool, man. Well, uh, last question. What is the best advice you have for all the garage gym athletes out there? Um, and it'd probably just be like, stop giving yourself excuses. You just, you really just have to get out and do the work. Um, that, that bottom line, nothing's going to happen unless you put the effort in to do it. So stop giving yourself excuses, not to do that workout, that extra rep, eat the right way. It's easy, right? It's easy to give yourself a way out. I love it. All right, Kyle, it's been a blast having you on again, man. And uh, it's awesome having you in the BCT track and really just you being a part of the community for such a long time and and being consistent. So I appreciate you uh, sticking around and doing the training and, uh, you know, pushing me each and every single day on this new track. So uh, thanks for being a garage athlete, man. And I appreciate you taking the time to do the podcast. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.